Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you what it's like to be an online guitar teacher. I'm going to be teaching uh, eight different students in I think six or seven time zones around the world. Let's get started. Okay, you got to keep your hand moving in 16th notes. Okay, hold on a second. Go ahead and stop it. Yeah. Okay. So that last that last strum there, you had it right on the the first uh, the first measure, but the yeah. last strum is coming on the upstroke of the second beat of the second measure. You put it on the downstroke, so it's yeah. it's like that. Yeah, that's it. Slow it down a little bit. That's it. Yeah, man. First example is we're playing the root and a fifth. Yeah. Right? And then we're going to the root and the sixth and the root and a flat seven. So because we're not including the third of the chord, it's kind of neutral. Yeah. So I can play this both over a minor chord groove or a dominant chord groove. Yeah. Because a dominant chord groove would include that flat seven. Okay, so I'll, I'll demonstrate that here. Okay. There's minor. Okay, if I put this over a dominant chord. Still works. The, the B flat over the A chord. Is yeah, good. now that's gonna work if you are moving from a dominant chord, like that, that A7, which we got here, to the one minor. So that's like a five, one minor. Okay, you can throw in that flat nine. So right now we're working off that A7 arpeggio. So the flat nine is gonna be in a half step above your root, so. Either there, or you, could, you have it up here as well. And what that does is just kind of pulls us in back to that D minor chord. You know, by giving us that altered note. Nice. Try to put your wrist out a little bit further like this. Now, if you do this and aim for that G string, there really should be no way that you're gonna, that you're gonna hit that A string because I think right now you're kind of, you know, have your wrist a little bit straighter. And when you're coming down, there's gonna be a risk of you grabbing that A note, you know, that A string. Okay. If you have it like this, really aim for that G string especially on the way up okay check it check this out on the way up the you know the the pick is going to go away from the strings if you have it angled if you have your wrist angle like this a little bit so there's no possible way that you're going to grab on the upstroke that a string okay you know it's just it's just not possible so see how it is like that i go down on the way up it comes back out like this it may seem awkward at first, but see how I got? When you say out, you mean like curve? Yeah. Like this I mean a little bit of a curve, yeah. So instead of having your, your forearm and your hand completely in line, I'm bringing my wrist outward a little bit. Yeah. Yeah.
Okay, now form the full chord again. Okay. Okay, now from the bottom, from this note, remember we're gonna skip strings. Yeah, so there you are. That's an interval of a sixth out of this chord shape. Yeah, exactly. You got that, and you got that. Exactly. So both of these intervals are six are also good to put on that F sharp chord. Okay. Either one. Now this is the same one that we used on the A, right? It's right in that A chord too. Right. So I can go A, slide up to that, and I can stay there for the F sharp minor because it's part of that shape. Or, or I could go down to the other one on the lower one on the F sharp minor, like this. Yeah, those top two. Okay, great. You're getting I, the idea. I see the finger, it makes a difference. I just... You know, something functioning around a tonal center of G, something like this bass line we did earlier. Mm -hmm. Right? That's going to sound like a G13 chord. But if I put that same chord mm -hmm. over the top of an E minor type of bass line, now I put, play that same chord, it sounds like an E minor chord. It's about the context. Okay, so, so in the case where like, so if I get a G, right? And I play like what would be the, I guess I've always thought of kind of a relative minor, I guess, whatever, right? Six, right? Yeah. But if I play that, that's really a G13? Sorry, it's an E minor, it could be a G13. This could probably be 10, 12 different chords. Yeah, I know, that's what, I, that's what I'm just, you know, like I said, my theory is so weak that I just, because it depends on the context. I mean, I could. This could be part of a C major seven chord, right? Say if we're going from this D minor. And then you're going to go to the G minor. Right? That's not the root. But then that's part of that. So you need to see that note as part of this arpeggio. I'm talking about the G minor seven arpeggio. Uh, and I'm not sure, play that again. So like this one, right? Now, if you extend that, you extend that another octave, so. Right. Right. Okay. So, force yourself to find the nearest note to your next chord. So if you're up here in D minor,
That's the note that would be nearest by the notes that you are on. Right? And you're not having to go back down here. All right, guys, I just finished the day, and I hope that gives you a good idea about what uh, online lessons are all about, what Skype lessons. It's a great way to study. You can do it from home. You can do it in your pajamas or your shorts like I am. Be comfortable. Anyways, if you're interested in getting started with me, um, there'll be a link in the description below that'll take you to my website where you can get more details about how the lessons work out. Take care.